Hi guys, Rahul Shayar, trying to make investing accessible and profitable for the average investor. Now I'm recording this video on my mobile phone, my smartphone called the Asus Zenfone. I keep forgetting the exact name, but it's I think it's Zenfone 5Z. Uh, quite an unusual choice for a mobile phone, uh, but actually three years back, I think this was the only phone in its category. Uh, or this was the phone which, uh, you know, given its specifications and features was amongst uh, the cheapest or the most, uh, you know, uh, value for money, if I may say so. And it has served me wonderfully well over the years. I think it's been almost three years that I've been using this phone and it's kind of working like a charm. Uh, in fact, when I was buying this phone, I had a choice between buying an iPhone or buying any other phone. And of course, iPhone, as you know, is, you know, far more expensive. It was almost, uh, you know, the twice the price of this particular phone. Uh, of course, you know, its quality is quite good. Uh, I think it's, it's a fantastic phone. You know, uh, I have friends who've used iPhones for years and they swear by it. And I'm sure that had I bought an iPhone, I wouldn't have been disappointed. And I would have really enjoyed using it. But, you know, given the choice between an iPhone and, you know, the phone that I'm using, the Asus Zenfone, I felt that this was a better value for money. And that's why I went ahead and, you know, bought this particular phone. Now, why am I telling you this? You know, something similar happens in the stock market as well. Uh, to give you an example, uh, there is a close connection between this story, the story of, uh, you know, whether you should buy an iPhone or, uh, you know, Asus Zenfone, the one that I bought. And the title of uh, this video, there's a close connection. A uh, few days back, one of India's leading business dailies approached us uh, through a PR agency, of course. Uh, and they wanted to know why the share price of care ratings is going up so much. Care ratings, as you would know, uh, you know, has done phenomenally well over the last three months. I think it's up some 65-70%. And they wanted to know the reason behind this strong up move in the stock. And, you know, what I told them is I gave a similar analogy uh, between Care Ratings and Crystal, uh, two of the biggest ratings agencies in the country. The analogy was similar to, you know, buying an iPhone or, or buying an Asus Zen 4 or, or any other phone uh, at a low, low price point. I told them that Crystal is the gold standard in the ratings agency business. I think it has a fantastic business model. Its business model is resilient. It's managed to diversify into different revenue streams over the years. And therefore, this has given uh, the business of the company a wonderful look, uh, you know, as compared to the other uh, companies in the industry, say care ratings, it has grown at a better pace over the last three, five years. Its return ratios are better, you know, uh, it's, it distributes a lot of its profits as dividends. Therefore, it's supposed to be the best uh, company in the industry or the iPhone of uh, the ratings agency's business, uh, if you ask me. In fact, I gave them a different analogy, but, uh, you know, something very similar. I told them that in the ratings agency's business, back in March 2020, you had a choice between buying a business which is a gold standard or say buying gold versus buying silver at the price of bronze. So when the markets fell, of course, the share price of crystal also fell with it and K ratings also fell. But... Uh, you know, when it comes to choosing between the two, which of the companies you should have chosen back then, back in March, March, April 2020, when the index collapsed and it was a good opportunity to buy stocks. Now, uh, there's a lot of confusion between people on how exactly to approach this. Should you buy the gold standard or should you buy gold or should you buy silver provided it's available at the price of bronze? Uh, now, what I mean by this, uh, you know, historically, care ratings has traded at price to earnings multiple of around 19, 20 times. If you look at its past history, last five years, 
Crystal, on the other hand, has traded at a price to earnings multiple of 39, 40 times. So, if the you know if they both the companies continue to continue to trade at these price to earnings multiple, then uh, I think you should prefer Crystal. But what happened back in March 2020 was CAE ratings fell much more than uh, Crystal fell, and its price to ratings, uh, sorry, price to earnings ratio came down to a single digit multiple. So a company which was trading at a price to earnings multiple of, you know, historically 19, 20 times was available at a price to earnings multiple of around 9 times to 10 times. And I think this was a time when it would have made more sense to invest in care ratings as compared to Crystal because while Crystal was the better business, Care Ratings was available at a more attractive valuation. It was available at a single digit price to earnings multiple and it wasn't as good a business as Crystal or still isn't but it's an okay business you know it has been around for years and it will also be you know around for many years going forward it's an important uh, business for the economy and uh, you know there are only very few players in the industry uh, the company has a very strong it's almost the balance sheet is almost debt free and uh, it has generated decent profits over the years so it's not a bad business and so given a choice between buying a business like Crystal or buying a business like Care Ratings which is available at which is available at a huge discount I would have uh, preferred you know, care ratings if you ask me and the this pattern keeps on repeating in the stock market uh, you know uh, every industry has certain business which is believed to be the best in the industry and it has businesses which are uh, you know second best or uh, you know silver business as I, as I like to call them and uh, a lot of the times it comes down to choosing between the two. So when it comes to making such decisions, it's always better to look at the valuations of, uh, you know, the second rung company or the silver companies. And if it's available at extremely attractive valuations, that is the business you should invest in. Now, uh, what you're seeing on your screen right now are examples from other industries as well, uh, you know. So Crystal back in March 2020 was trading at a price to earnings multiple of 26 times. Care ratings, as I mentioned, was trading at single digit or thereabouts. Price to earnings multiple of 12 times. So a gold business and a silver business, but silver business available extremely cheap. Trading at a single digit price to earnings multiple, trading at the price of bronze or trading at a significant discount to its long term price to earnings multiple. Group 2, I took another example, another industry, FMCG industry, where Marico is supposed to be the gold standard and company company like Bajaj Consumer Care is supposed to be a second rung business. Again, same thing. Marico was available at expensive valuations. You know, of course, it's a gold stock and you won't get that cheap. But Bajaj Consumer Care was available at, again, close to single digit price to earnings multiple, uh, where you have a silver business which is available at extremely attractive valuations or available at the price of bronze as I like to call it. Group 3, I took an example from the IT industry. TCS, available at a price zone is multiple of 21 times back in March 2020. E-Clerks, again, a low single digit price zone is multiple, again, a silver business, a decent business, not a business that's, uh, you know, uh, struggling or that has a lot of leverage, but a business that has done reasonably well in the recent past and is expected to do well in the future as well. So it's gold and silver business from the IT industry. Textile industry, Page Industries versus Ambika Cotton. Again, Page Industries is the gold standard in textile industries, has a very strong brand, you know, has done phenomenally well over the years. Ambika Cotton, a well-managed mid-sized company, uh, which can again be categorized as a silver business. So let us look at the, you know, how these companies have performed since March 2020. Crystal and Care Ratings, very little to choose between the two. Both of the businesses, both the businesses have done well on the stock market. Crystal is up 127%, Care Ratings up 122%. 
The remaining industries is, is where it gets really interesting. Marico, the gold standard business, has underperformed Bajaj Consumer Care. Why? Because Bajaj Consumer Care was available at a price to earnings multiple of just 10 times. So even though Marico was a biz better business, but since Bajaj Consumer Care had very attractive valuations, it ended up outperforming Marico. Group 3, a huge outperformance by eClerks vis-a-vis TCS. A very attractive price to earn his multiple of seven times, which tilted the scales in favor of eClux, I would say. The stock is up a whopping 388% versus 81% returns by TCS, not, which is not bad, but significantly below 388% given by, you know, eClux. Group 4, Page Industry 74%, but was outperformed by Ambika Cotton, which was again trading at a very attractive price to earn his multiple and therefore ended up giving, had an 18% returns as compared to 74% returns from page industries. So as you can see, silver businesses outperforming gold businesses because the silver businesses were available at very attractive valuations. Now you could argue that I have, you know, chosen a date that suited the analysis or that suited my argument of uh, showing silver businesses having an upper hand vis-a-vis -vis the gold businesses but th that's not the case uh, you know March th what I did was I took one cutoff date March 31 2020 and any business decent quality business uh, which was available at a price to earn is multiple of 10 times or below I considered only those businesses because I wanted silver businesses to be available at extremely attractive valuations. So any business which was not available at a price to earnings multiple of, uh, you know, below 10 times, I did not consider those. Only those businesses which were available at a price to earnings multiple of 10 or below were considered. And I considered that to be the cutoff multiple for buying silver businesses. Silver businesses, ideally, that's a thumb of rule, should be bought at a price to earnings multiple of... 10 times or below and the earnings that you should consider should not be the latest earnings but the average earnings over a period of 3 to 5 years so to account for the business cycle. So when it comes to choosing between gold and silver businesses, buy silver businesses if they are available at a very attractive price to earnings multiple of 10 times or below. If you buy 25-30 such businesses, there is a very small chance that they won't end up outperforming uh, the gold businesses and uh, maybe they don't do that but they'll certainly end up giving good returns to you. Now this is of course in no way an argument against buying gold stocks. Gold stocks, uh, you know, if you were to avoid a permanent loss of capital or if you're worried more about the downside risk than uh, the upside potential, then perhaps you should invest in a portfolio of gold stocks. Over the long term, uh, there's every chance that gold stocks will end up doing well. Uh, you know, they may not end up outperforming the silver stocks, so they may not end up giving you market beating returns, huge market beating returns. But if you want to play it safe, uh, you can of course buy a portfolio of gold stocks. But if you want to try and earn those market beating returns, if you're looking for, you know, earning those 20-25% CAGR returns over the long term, silver stocks is what you should prefer. But you should buy them at very attractive valuations. You should not buy a silver stock if it's trading at, you know, a price to earnings multiple of say 15, 16, 20 times. Maybe that's uh, a high risk strategy. A good strategy of buying silver stocks and doing well with a portfolio of silver stocks is to buy them at a price to earnings multiple of 10 times or below. And a group of 20, 25 such stocks will definitely end, end up giving you good returns, you know, over the long term. Now, another chart is uh, what would have happened if you would have invested rupees 100 each in both the silver four gold stocks we saw earlier and four silver stocks. A group of gold stocks, four gold stocks would have turned 100 rupees into 769 rupees, almost doubling your money between March 2020 and right now. Silver stocks which were available in bronze like valuations would have tripled your money so a group of silver stocks which was available at bronze like valuations have ended up outperforming gold stocks 
And I don't think this is a one-off case uh, because, you know, as I said, the logic behind buying silver stocks at bronze like valuations, uh, you know, there's a sound logic behind it. You're getting a big margin of safety. You're buying it at very low valuations. And it has, in my experience, it has tended to work well historically as well. Uh, you know, my... 14, 15 year history in the stock market, uh, you know, I have often seen that when gold, when you buy silver stocks at a very attractive valuations, at bronze like valuations, you usually end up doing well over the long term. You end up outperforming a portfolio of gold stocks. But the portfolio of silver stocks is definitely more volatile, and there's a risk that if you get it wrong, if you invest in the wrong silver stock, your loss may look bigger than a portfolio of gold stocks. But if you do it right, if you, you know, judge the stock correctly if you buy it at the right valuations if you are patient disciplined about valuations then you know uh, silver stocks have the potential of doing well vis-a-vis -vis the gold stocks so yeah uh, those were the advantages disadvantages of gold stocks uh, you know buying gold stocks vis-a-vis -vis silver stocks uh, do let me know what you think of this video as usual i'll you know await your feedback and I'll answer your queries to the best of my abilities. So that's all from me today. I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much.